if you've made a solid product but it's not completely pure, most of the time it won't be. Uh, one of the standard purification or separation techniques in that situation is recrystallizing. This involves dissolving the product in a solvent and then bringing it back out of solution in a purified form. This video talks about recrystallization and how to do it on both a micro scale and a macro scale. Whenever you synthesize a solid chemical, you're going to have a mixture at the end of the reaction. There's going to be starting materials, catalysts, side products, um, what might be known products, or there might be some brown goo in there. Some of these unwanted products you can usually get rid of by washing or extraction, but frequently that's not enough to purify a solid product. Recrystallization is a separation process that is used to purify a solid that has got some small quantities of solid impurities present in the crude product. The process of recrystallization involves dissolving the solid product and any impurities in a solvent at high temperature, and then you chill the solution. Because solubility of solids in liquids increases with temperature, more solid is soluble at the boiling point of the solvent than at cold temperatures. You dissolve the impure solid in a minimum amount of boiling solvent. This makes close to a saturated solution of your product. As you cool the solution, the solution becomes supersaturated and the product comes out as crystals. You cool the solution as much as possible to get as much of the product out of solution as you can. The idea is also that the impurities, which are present in smaller quantities, stay in solution. So when you filter off the solid, the impurities go off with the solvent. You will also lose some of your product in that solvent. It's inevitable. You do try and minimize the loss by chilling it, ice temperatures, but what you're doing here is sacrificing quantity of product for quality. Let's take a hypothetical example and move over to the board. So if we take a hypothetical example, we've got 90 units of product A, I've got these in black here, and you're contaminated with seven units of X, which are the green ones. If we add some solvent, let's say methanol, but it could be any solvent, and put all this in a liquid and heat it. And Let's say that at the boiling point of methanol, 100 units of A will go into solution this much methanol, and 150 units of X would be soluble. So we've got uh, 100 units of A solubility, 150 of X. That's way above the actual amount that we've got there, so everything is in solution. All right, this, and let's cool it down. It's now 60 degrees. At this point, we've got, say, 60 units of A soluble and um, 100 units of X. So we're starting to get A precipitating out. There's still a whole lot of A and all of the X still in solution. Then if we chill this down to, say, room temperature, 25, we've got only 30 units of A soluble, 75 units of X. So it's all of the X remains in solution, and we've got a fair amount of A precipitating out. If we chill this in ice, we're going to get even more, but we're still not going to get any of the X coming out of solution. So at this point, we filter it off, we recover the 80 units or so of A and no X. We will lose, say, 10 units of A in the product, but we will lose all of the impurity, and so the solid we've got at the bottom is a nice product. There is an optimum size to a crystal. They, if they're absolutely huge, they look really pretty, but big crystals have usually got occlusions of solvent and impurities within them, so that's not ideal. At the other end of the scale, if they're powdered the size of flour, say, the surface area for those uh, solid particles is enormous relative to their size, and that lets lots of impurities be adsorbed onto the surface of the solid. 
turns out that the optimum size for a crystal for minimum impurity is about the size of table salt or sugar. So for that reason, you don't chill your hot solution immediately. If you do that, you'll bring lots of things out of solution at once, little tiny particles, and they're less pure than if you let them grow slowly. So just let the solution cool in air to about room temperature, and then you put it on ice to get as much out of solution as you can before the solvent freezes. Now, the actual separation of, sol of crystals from solvent is a separation process. If you're doing this on the macro scale, you just use suction filtration. You know how to do that already. Uh, you'll want to do that while the solvent is cold so that you minimize the amount of stuff going back into solution. On a micro scale, if you don't have huge amounts of solvent present, you really can't use a suction filter because you'll lose it to the filter itself. You use another device called a Craig tube and we'll demonstrate the use of that. Quite often, when you get a supersaturated solution uh, and you're cooling it down, it stays in solution. And you think, there should be solid coming out of this. In this case, nucleation is the answer. Um, I, what you do is you provide something for the crystals to grow on. Ideally, that will be a real crystal of your product. Maybe borrow one from your neighbor if you can't find it. Or if you can't manage that, just scratching the glass or sometimes even shaking the container and splashing about will cause nucleation. Once a solid is starting to come out, uh, you don't need to act any further. It will precipitate out until it is at the subsaturation level. For recrystallization, you dissolve the impure solid in a minimum amount of boiling solvent. In this course, we'll tell you what that solvent is going to be. Actually, finding the optimum solvent can be interesting, but we'll tell you this time. So you need to have your impure solvent in a container, in a flask of boiling solvent, which you add a boiling chip to so it doesn't boil over, and a pasteur pipette to move it around. And then you add a small amount of solvent to the solid. You swirl it around, and you put it on the hot plate. It probably won't all dissolve. So you add just a little bit more, keep swirling, until it just dissolves. Then you increase it about 10%. You don't want to swamp it, but you also don't want it coming out of solution immediately. Once you've got it to that situation, boiling solvent, not much more than uh, you need. Put it aside to cool. You chill it uh, once it's done, and then you filter. On a macro scale, you'll use a beaker or a flask. Now, for a micro scale process, you'll need to use a Craig tube. On the micro scale, you'll need to use a Craig tube, and this is what a Craig tube looks like. You have two of them in your locker. Uh, this is a two mil size, it's the big one. Um, there's another one slightly smaller, one mil. And this is the pestle that comes with it. It fits in like that. And um, sometimes these are glass. Now, it's, as I said, it's a filtering device. If you look, there is ground glass at that point, And that's where the filter is. A Craig tube actually sits in the well, like that, of a heating block for when you're heating. But again, the idea for all kinds of recrystallizing is dissolving a solid in a minimum amount of boiling solvent. So you sit this in there and dissolve your solid in here while it's boiling. Now, a Craig tube is also a filtering device. This shoulder here is ground glass, and when I put the pestle on top, the liquid can squeeze through that gap and the solid stays behind. Let's do this in diagram form on the board. I've got a Craig tube like that, and I've got my crystals at the bottom, and a pestle which fits there. And I've got some liquid. The surfaces here are ground glass and will form a filter. 
Now, the actual filtration is done not by gravity, but by centrifuge. You put a centrifuge tube over the top of the whole thing. You do this this way up, and actually, before you put the centrifuge tube in place, you take a copper wire, which you wrap around the pestle handle, bring it down here, and loop it around like that. Then, when you centrifuge it, and let me turn, draw the diagram the other way up, you have the pestle, you have the Craig tube, The liquid will have squozen out, and you've got the liquid down here, and you have your crystals up here because they couldn't escape. You then use the wire to pull the whole thing out, and your crystals are inside the Craig tube. Now, let's do that actually in front of you, showing real items rather than diagrams. This is a setup for macro scale recrystallization. I've got some solvent here in an Erlenmeyer flask. I've got some boiling chips in there and a Pasteur pipette to actually do the dispensing. Um, I've got my solid to recrystallize here, and I don't put it on the heat until you've actually got some liquid sitting there. Um, assuming this is boiling, we'll add a little bit of the solvent, not looking terribly enthusiastic here, so now that certainly isn't going to dissolve. Put it on there and keep this boiling and check, swirl around, see if it's going to go into solution. While you are doing this, it's a good idea to flush your pasteur pipette with the boiling solvent just before you add it because there's a large surface area here and it will cool down. But if you make sure that the actual glassware is hot, then you'll have a better time of it. Still not enough, so I'll add some more until we're actually dissolved. I'm not going to sport with your patience uh, watching this actually dissolve. But So when it does dissolve, it'll look like that. And once you have got this, and boiling situation, you take it off the heat and put it aside to cool, and you leave it on the bench cooling until it's room temperature. Now, when you can put your hand underneath it and it doesn't feel too hot, then you're ready to chill. We do have ice, which appears in the lab in bowls like this, actually over on the side benches. And getting some ice into your plastic tub makes a nice bath for you. And once it is cool enough, you can pack that in ice to get as many crystals out as you can. And then once it is chilled, you've got crystals available, filter this off by suction, and you know how to do suction filtration. Let's move on to micro scale uh, crystallization, which is using equipment that you haven't seen before. So I now have my solid to be recrystallized at the bottom of a Craig tube and some boiling solvent available. So we put a little bit of hot solvent in there, shake it up to dissolve, and it sits in one of these wells. This isn't going to dissolve immediately, but let it come up to temperature, and if it hasn't gone into solution, add a little bit more. And once it does go into solution, and again, I'm not going to sport with your patience to demonstrate that here, but once it does go into solution, then you need to add just a little bit more, maybe 10% more solvent, and bring out your small Erlenmeyer flask, remove this, assuming it's all in solution, and put it inside the Erlenmeyer flask to stand it up to cool down. And this will not only stand up, but it will let it cool more slowly. Once you have got this down to room temperature, 
you can again use an ice bath to make sure that you've actually got everything out of solution that's going to come. The exciting part of using a Craig tube, of course, is the actual suction, uh, excuse me, the filtration. So we take the Craig tube itself, put the pestle, and again, this could be glass as opposed to Teflon here. Take the length of copper wire, this is why you've got it in there, and wrap it a few times around the handle like that. Then, Take your centrifuge tube and the whole item goes in the centrifuge tube with the handle of the pestle all the way to the tip. Then bend the wire over like that, like a hook, and we now go to the centrifuge. Here we have our centrifuge tube and um, Craig tube assembly at the centrifuge. Now, We've got another centrifuge tube to balance this. You will undoubtedly have other people uh, doing the same thing at the same time. So make sure you balance the centrifuge with these. Remember where you put it and slide it in. And then turn it on to spin and leave it for about a minute. All right, we've now got the centrifuge stopped. Just uh, run it for about a minute. And once you're ready to go, there we are. Take yours out, and again, remember that you need to uh, remember which slot is yours. The liquid is down at the bottom. You use the wire to hook everything up. And here we have my solid inside the Craig tube and the supernatant down at the bottom of the centrifuge tube. You can tap this out onto a watch glass. If uh, it hasn't come down far enough, you can use your spatula to help it out. And there is how you separate solids from liquids using a Craig tube. In conclusion, recrystallization is purifying a solid product based on different solubilities in a given solvent at low and at high temperatures, leaving unwanted materials behind in the solvent. It only works if you can find a solvent where the low and high temperature solubilities are significantly different and where the impurities are soluble in that solvent. This process invariably loses product and cuts yield, but it provides high quality crystalline product at the end. You should now understand the process of recrystallization on both a macro scale and a micro scale.